What up, y'all? I want to make a little short video today. I'm just going to read over this parable. It's 16 verses. We try to get over it pretty quickly. But um, I was watching a video because, you know, I subscribe to a lot of these YouTube theologians. Some of them got predictions. Some got dreams. Some got all kind of things to say. Some right, some wrong, some biblical, some not. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, one thing I like is that it's, one, it's, a, it's something that Marcus Rogers said, which... Of course, he's not the best, yeah, the best vessel, of course, because even some of the stuff he says, he's a, you know, he's guilty of, of the same thing that he judges others in. But there's one thing he said, like, if he would just do this, it'd be perfect. But it's a good saying. It's just he hasn't always been faithful to this saying in the past or right now. So he has said one time, well, he says it all the time where he says, if it's not a heaven to hell issue, you know, we should be able to get past that because ultimately getting to the kingdom of heaven is as simple as Romans 10, 9 and 10 and John 3, 16 and 17. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. Right. Also, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, you shall be saved. Right. God is not slack concerning his promise, but he is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So ultimately, the gospel is all about salvation. It's about believing in Jesus Christ. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he came in the flesh, died on the cross, rose again, you will be saved. It's as simple as that. Now, all the other books, the history, the law, even the conduct of Christians that Paul wrote about in the different letters, it's all good. It's useful, but it's almost like it's outside of the main message. The main message, the main message is the gospel which is believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. And because you believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to produce these fruits. Because you believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to produce or develop, you know, endure hardening and chastening that you may be resistant to sin, resistant to temptation. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take years and years. But the fact that you continue to believe, you're still viable for the kingdom, right? So I'm going to read this parable to you. I already pretty much explained, you know, <laughs> what it pretty much means, but this parable is something I was thinking about because a lot of these guys, they get a little bit prideful, right? And it's, I did more than you. I've been serving the kingdom. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I've been working this. I've been working that. And ultimately, it doesn't matter what you work on. It doesn't matter what you claim to do for the kingdom. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are part of the kingdom. Whether you, you know, preach a thousand messages, whether you preach no messages, whether you build a 15,000 schools, shelters, churches, and all this other stuff, it means nothing. Whether you buy 15 cars, whether you, you take a low salary and you give it all to the poor, it means nothing. All of the stuff is with thanksgiving if you believe Jesus Christ, right? As long as you believe Jesus Christ, you have admitted us into heaven, right? So let's just read this parable, then we'll be done with it. This is in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. This is from the New King James. Now, when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Right. So he's already invited people to hit. This is him saying he, he invited some people to heaven and he gave them the actual. The reward is if you do whatever this is, like it's just it's a parable to represent going to the kingdom of heaven. So if you do whatever this is, right, which is just to believe if you believe you're going to go to heaven. That's the denarius a day. That's the reward for everybody. So this is early in the morning. So he, this is the first, like, think of this as the first fruits of the spirit. Peter, Paul, James, John, those guys, the first, you know, the first few people to have the Holy Spirit, to speak in tongues, to walk in all the favor and do the miracles and all that stuff. They're in the same heaven that you're going to go to. Whether you speak in tongues, whether you drink poison, whether you do all these amazing works, you could do no amazing works, but because you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll be in the same heaven that they're in. So think of these as the first fruits of the spirit. He sent them out to the vineyard. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. AKA, he saw some people who, you know, like the blind, the lame, the, the homeless, the sick. Y'all ain't doing nothing. If you just believe in me, you can go to the kingdom. Great, cool. Now, mind you, there's another group in the beginning that was there for three hours, you know, that elapsed between them believing and the other people believing. They might've faced persecution. They might have been hurt. They might have been afflicted. They might have faced trials and tribulations. They might be tired of waiting. They might be tired of resisting. And yet, it's still the same reward at the end of the day. Moving on. Verse 5. Again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. So he found two other groups at the sixth hour, one group at the sixth hour, and one group at the ninth hour doing nothing. He told them to believe, and they're going to get the same reward, which is admittance into heaven. 
in about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle again and said to them, why have you been standing here all idle all day? They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right you will receive. AKA, he saw people out here living in sin and he asked, why are you doing this? Why do you live like this? They have no purpose. They have no direction. They have no calling. They don't understand why they're here, where they come from or where they're supposed to be going. He gives them a mission. He tells them the kingdom of heaven is near you. Believe in me and you shall receive it. Great, but it's the 11th hour. So there's a group that's been here for 12 hours believing. And that 12 hours can represent 100 years, 90 years, 80 years, a long time. It's been a long time elapsed between the first fruits of the spirit and people that's just getting saved now. But as long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you will get to heaven. No matter all these works that some people do, you may not have to do no works. You, it, like That may not be within the cards for you, right? Just depending on what decisions we make, what God has for us, and what God wants to do through our life, which is not always this amazing testimony of you know feats and, and, and daring escapes. It, it's good, you know, it's good to read it, but ultimately, who cares? What it does is it causes envy, it causes strife, it causes this pick me attitude in the, in the body of Christ. I'm better than you because I preached a thousand messages. And so you're gonna still be in heaven with everybody else. You're not gonna have a bigger mansion, you're not gonna have a bigger lawn. Like it's literally heaven. It's not no, it's not no, it's the heaven of me, it's the heaven of uh Professor B, it's the heaven of Professor C, it's the heaven of Professor D. And that's just random groups of people like it's like there's as if there's a Lutheran heaven, a, a missionary heaven, a Baptist heaven, a Protestant heaven. It's one heaven, a white heaven, a black heaven, an Asian heaven. Like it's only one heaven. I got a hundred thousand a year. I got fifty thousand. I got forty thousand. I got two hundred thousand a year. I say five souls, ten souls, a hundred souls, a billion souls. It doesn't matter what you've done for the kingdom of God. If you believe you're going to be there. So why care about all this stuff? But that's the pride rising up. I've done so much and I feel like I deserve a bigger reward. Well, the Bible's telling you right here in Matthew chapter 20, you will not get a different reward. Your reward will be the same as everyone else's. You're going to heaven as a sinner, as somebody who messed up multiple times and God had mercy upon you. That's it. That's all. That's only reward. All this other stuff, all of, you know, whatever they be talking about, you're getting crowns and, and treasures. Like, fam, the only treasure that you need is Jesus Christ's presence. Because some of us, you know, may not be the first fruits of the spirit, but we've been... Waiting on God to do so many great things. He may never do them for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how it works. He may never do them. Just because you believe Jesus Christ can do it, just because it's in the Bible, doesn't mean you're going to get that reward. Right? I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Well, he's he, he, he ain't been providing like that. I've been struggling and stressing for a, a while. I ain't never stopped believing. I ain't never lost my faith in Jesus Christ. And yet somehow, you know what I mean? You can see some people come up within the first four or five months. And they run around doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. And it's like, wow, if only that could be me. Not that I want to do the work that they're doing, but I want to, you know, I want to be provided for. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even about the work. I can care less about the work. I care about, you know, having that provision so I can have that testimony that I believed and it worked out. Not that I believed and I'm still believing and, you know, years have passed and you know, I'm still believing and we don't know what's going to happen. But you got to understand that sometimes these miracles ain't for you. Sometimes it's just for these people. But the problem comes in where they get on these videos and they become prideful. They elevate their work above everyone else's. As you know, as if what's for you is for you and what's, what's not for you is not for you. Just because they have something you don't have, it doesn't make you any less of a Christian. Just because you don't have something and they do have it, that doesn't make them any more of a Christian. <clears throat> Let's finish reading and we'll be done. Verse 8. So when the evening had can when the evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, "Call the laborers and give them their wages, which is the kingdom in the king the admitted, admittance into the kingdom of heaven, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying." These last men have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be the first and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. Crazy thing is... If we ever get prideful to ever think that we can elevate our own work above others, let's not forget 
this salvation is not of works, but it's of faith. It's of belief. Therefore, if I believe in the last hour, I will receive the same gift as those who believed in the first hour. It doesn't matter if I never do all those great feats. You know what I'm saying? And I use myself as an example, but you may be going through the same exact situation. That you see God doing great things for these people. Certain people, you just feel like, man, am I less of a Christian? If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not. If you believe that he died, died on the cross, rose again for our salvation, you're not any less of a Christian. So don't let anything, don't let anything drag you aside to lift or to the right to make you feel like you're any less than or you need to do more. You need to work really hard. You need to produce so much. You don't need to do anything but believe in Jesus Christ and, you know, put an effort towards bringing other people to the kingdom, which is just to plant those seeds, just to talk about Jesus, whether you're on your job, whether you're in your family. A lot of people going through situations right now where they may not have a job. So just make sure you're talking about Jesus Christ with everybody you're around, or, you know, as much as possible. As much as possible, because everybody's not willing to hear it. But you can tell at the situation, let the spirit take over. Like let, let the spirit reveal to you what these people need, right? And then just spread the gospel that way, plant those seeds. And don't never get high and mighty over the work that you're claiming to be doing, because it, it means nothing. We're all gonna receive the same denarius at the end of the day. We all gonna walk in there as sinners, not great men of God who never sin. We're not Jesus Christ. We will not re receive a name higher than the angels. We are nothing like that. Therefore, you're going to walk in with your head, head, head held down low, not able to look Jesus Christ in the eyes. Yeah, he might say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you did what he asked of you. But that isn't a sense of pride. That's a sense of, it's still mercy. Because none of us deserve to be here. No matter how much churches we plant, no matter how many sermons we give, no matter how many videos we make, we do not deserve to be in heaven. It's all a gift of mercy. Whether you believe in 12 years old, whether you believe at 25, whether you believe at 99, it's all going to receive the same gift which is um, admit us into the kingdom of heaven. So I pray that you was blessed by that. I know it was kind of a harsh message, but it's just the truth. Pride and narcissism means nothing in the kingdom. It's as simple as believe, you'll be saved. Don't believe, you're going to hell. Every sinner is counted as an unbeliever. So that's that's really the the key there. If you die with unrepentant sin, that's just called, it's just unbeliever, right? The only unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which is to not accept the Holy Spirit which also means to not change. Therefore, if you was a liar your whole life and you knew you could just say, God, forgive me. God, forgive me for my lies. I don't want to live like this anymore. Show me the way to live better. No matter what you do after that, even if you lie again, every time you repent, it's a new day. Every time you repent, you start over. Every time you repent, you start over. But when you don't repent, when you become to get prideful and all this other stuff, you know, God's not real because God didn't do this for me, all that kind of stuff, and you don't repent of it, that's just as good as blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is to not accept the changing that God is trying to give us, right? His spirit of transformation. Therefore, so it's as simple as believe and be done with it. Believe in Jesus Christ and allow God to do the rest. If he want to provide you something, if he want to give you a certain job, a certain office to perform, a marriage, a kid, whatever you believe in God for, allow him to, you know, speak that into your life, right? Through prophecy, through prophets, through um, prayer, you know, praying in tongues, whatever you do that allow you to get that revelation from God. He's trying to tell you, you want to give you something, then believe for that. But outside of that, let's not get so stressed out and worried about it because at the end of the day, we all going to get the same reward. Whatever happens on this side of, of on this side of salvation means nothing compared to what's going to happen on the other side, which is everybody in heaven. No more, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness, and definitely no more death. So please be blessed by this message. Don't take it the wrong way and just you know, pray about it. But this comes from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. If you want to read over it and study it, because it's first thing I thought about when I started feeling like, you know, when I start hearing some of these videos this morning, I'm just like, yeah, it's a lot of pride, man. It's a lot of pride coming out. So Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16, if you want to check my work. And that's it for today.